All right, I'm ready to get started. I've already cut out both of my bodice pieces, front and back, and I've cut out a couple squares of material that I'm going to be using for the bodice. And so, if you want more details on how to make a dog dress from start to finish in great detail, check out the video that I will link above and down in the description. But let's get started on this really adorable ladybug themed dress. For the front of the bodice, I'm going to be using this sweet ladybug print as well as this red solid. I picked this material up at Joann's Fabric. These squares have been cut to two and a half inch squares, just roughly. And then I'm also going to need some hexagons. Now you can go onto the internet and find images of hexagons and print them up and use them. It's best if you can print it onto something like cardstock, something a little bit thicker. I actually use my Cricut Joy to cut these out. And if you wanna make the same exact size hexagon as I made, this is a one inch hexagon, which actually measures two inches from this point to this point but one inch hexagon is measured from this flat surface. So every flat surface is one inch. So you could make them bigger. This flat surface could be one and a half or two inches, but I find with the size of Posey's bodice, a one inch hexagon is best. So remember, when I say one inch, that is the flat surface is each one inch. It actually measures about two inches from its widest points. So go ahead and look on the internet or you can freehand them. It does not have to be perfect. The next step is to take one of our pieces of fabric. These are two and a half inches square so that when I lay my hexagon on it, I have plenty of room all the way around the edge because we're going to want to have at least a quarter of an inch extra than the size of the hexagon. So I'll flip my fabric upside down so I have the wrong side facing up and place my hexagon on top, just kind of central. And then I simply take some scissors or rotary cutter and kind of cut off these corners here. Not getting too close. I wanna leave at least a quarter of an inch all the way around the hexagon. And as you can see, it's not even a hexagon shape, but that's fine. And the next step is to take a needle and some thread. I've put a knot at the end of my thread here and I'm going to simply take my hexagon with my material that is on it, make sure this is central, and fold one edge over. Posey's digging in a box over there. <laughs> Posey, stop. So I fold this over right against the flat edge of this hexagon and then I move to this next edge and making sure this is still laying flat, I fold this edge over, just kind of like I'm wrapping a package. And as you can see, I have this nice point here. Now I'm gonna take my needle and simply come in to the fabric and grab both pieces of material right where they folded over and pull it through and just make about two loops here to secure it into place. Did you lose something? So there's one loop and I'll just do one more. This is really actually quite simple and quick just to secure that little fold into place. Then I make sure this is flat against this edge and come along and fold the next edge over as well. And same process, two little stitches right here This process is called English paper piecing. This is actually a technique that was used and is used still to do quilting of hexagons or other shapes. So continue along, flat, right, the fabric's flat on this edge, fold over the next edge, and right here where this little fold is, secure it in place with two quick little stitches. And then again, so you can see I have my two stitches there and now we're coming up on the end here 
So again, just make sure this is nice and flat and fold this edge over. Two stitches here. And you know, you could probably get away with one stitch, but I'm being super cautious and making sure it's really secure. So the last one, I'm gonna follow along straight over and fold that last flap over and secure this last little corner in with my thread with two little stitches. There's one, and on the last stitch, I'm going to pull it through and leave a little loop here and simply put my needle through that and pull secure. And I'm not even gonna do it twice. That should be sufficient. And cut off my little tails of my string. If you look closely here, you can see that it's not very pretty even on the back. You see the thread coming across all these edges. But when you flip it over, we have a really lovely hexagon shape. And so I'm going to continue this. I'm going to make three hexagons total for my bodice. I'm going to do another one in the ladybug and one in the solid red, and then we'll come right back. All right, I finished all three of my hexagons, and just to give you an idea, I timed myself completing one of these, and it took roughly two minutes. So it really does not take very long to hand stitch these hexagons into place. One thing I wanted to know about sewing this hexagon into place around your paper template is to not sew through the paper, only sew through the fabric, and that's very easy. It's not difficult, but just make note of that. Okay, so the next step is to put these together. And the design that I would like to have looks like this. So I'm going to attach these two edges and these two edges. And the way that we will do that is again, with the needle and thread that already has been knotted at the end, we will take two of our hexagons and these two edges I want to match up. So I will put them good sides together like this. So now I have this flat edge right here. I'm simply going to insert my needle right here in the corner, only going through the layers of fabric, not my hexagon template. And once I've come through, I'm going to loop through again, just through the very top, as you can see here, of both hexagons, the yellow and the red, being careful not to catch any of the paper template and go about an eighth of an inch over and go through both materials again and continue to do this just doing a little oops whip stitch all the way till we get to the last corner when we get to the last corner make sure you sew it all the way to the corner and just keep these nice and lined up so i'll just continue on here Okay, I'm here at the very corner and I've put a stitch through on the very corner there. And on my very last stitch, I'm gonna come through both pieces of material, pull and leave a little loop that I will pull through and do it one last time to really give it a nice secure knot. So once you have a little loop, stick your needle through it and pull through to secure. So now if I open this up, you can see that I have a nice, almost invisible seam. Okay, so now I'm gonna clip my thread and I'm going to move to the next one. So the way I have this oriented is like this, right there, and I want this one here. So I have a flat top here, and on these side angles, I have my yellows. So again, I will just butt this one up, good sides to good side, and right here on this corner, this edge rather is where I want it to meet. So make sure you're sewing the edges you want to join together. So it's right here and I'm gonna do the same process. Okay, I've just finished this last hexagon. It's completely stitched on as you can see. I've knotted it off and so now I'm going to cut my thread away and any other long little threads I have. So I'll grab these. Don't cut your stitches that kept these together, however, just any loose thread. 
And if I turn it over, I have a sweet little hexagon pattern. And like I said, you can join more up. They fit perfectly together like a little puzzle. It's really quite sweet. And so from here, I am going to take the front of my bodice, which is a sweet black and white polka dot. And I'm going to have my hexagon lay like this. Of course, I could lay it this way. I could do anything. You can make smaller hexagons and make a sweet little circle or a flower. A really sweet hexagon pattern that you will see if you look this up online is where you have, say, maybe this red one in the center and the yellow ones all the way around it or vice versa, and it makes sort of a flower. So there's a lot of options, but I think I'm going to do mine like this. So we're going to attach this to our bodice, but we're not gonna do it with the paper in. Here's where the kind of cool part comes into play. We can take this cardboard out of here by just kind of bending the fabric back and pulling this cardboard insert out. It's not cardboard, cardstock, just like so. Just carefully maneuver it out of there. And if this gets a little bit wonky, you can press it with your iron. But as you can see, mine's kept its shape pretty well. So I'm gonna remove all of these carefully. Just fold back a couple corners and then it should slip right out. And go ahead and push your fabric back into place right away. And the great thing is you can reuse these little templates. So I'm just gonna smoosh mine down a little bit, pull my bodice back over. And so as you can see, all the edges are tucked under. And when we attach this to our bodice, they're going to be stitched on because I'm gonna do the rest at my sewing machine. You could do this whole thing by hand, simply kind of whip stitch this onto place, but I'm gonna do the rest on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna find the center of my bodice by folding this in half. Give it a little finger press. I can see that the center is right here on that crease. And so I will center this in the center of the bodice this way and this way. And then I will pin it into place in just a few spots. And so now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to choose a color of thread that can go across all of this. Of course, you could switch your thread out, but I think that just using a white thread might be kind of cute to use a larger stitch and close, sew about an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around this shape in order to attach it. Okay, so I'm at my sewing machine here and I'm gonna just choose a spot to start on and I think I'll start right about here. I'm going to lower my presser foot and I'm gonna use this little guide here on my foot to keep about an eighth of an inch away. And I'm going to put down the needle and remember to back stitch at the beginning. And then follow the shape, just keeping real close to the edge when I get to a corner, I'll keep my needle down, lift up my presser foot, lower it, pivot, and continue on. I'm at a corner again, so I'm going to lift up my presser foot, pivot, lower, and continue on. And just do this all the way around. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine, and as you can see, I've gone all the way around the shape. If you want, you could even sew down the intersections, but I'm okay with the way it is now. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is closing this bodice off. Leaving this one face up, I'm going to take my back piece and put it on top, having the good sides facing each other. Line it up as best I can. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and stitch all the way around this bodice, except for the bottom part in order to close it. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I've cut my corners, not cutting into the 
stitching and put some little slits on the bins. And so now I'm gonna turn it right side out. And so I'm going to finish this dress off the same way I do all my other dresses by adding a skirt. And don't forget to check out the video linked above on how to do that. Okay, I finished up here, and as you can see, I've added a few hexagons down here to the bottom of the skirt. You could scatter them, anything you want. The point is that you can be really creative with this dress. When I look at it now, I'm not real happy with this placement. The wrist reminds me of some eyes and a big red nose. <laughs> but play around with it. Put your hexagons down before you sew them on and really make sure that you're happy with it. And remember, you can make these hexagons in any size you want. You can make them as small as a little penny. Of course, they would be harder to put together, but how sweet would it be to put tiny ones all together like a flower in the middle of this bodice? I think that it turned out pretty sweet. I love the concept of just sitting while you're watching TV, relaxing, and sewing these little hexagons together on their little paper forms, and then using them for a future project. So I hope that you guys will give this a try. Let's go outside and try it on Miss Posey.